Happy Tuesday, all you Minties. This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And today is the day that I get to talk about all these upcoming Collected Editions coming out from Marvel this week. So let's go ahead and get started. Before getting started, I'm going to give a huge shout out to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us advanced copies of these Collected Editions. All of these books are due out in the direct market and book market on August 9th or 10th, depending on where you get your books. I do know that some folks have already gotten a copy of these epic collections, depending on what country you live in. But I always like to play it safe and just do these overviews the week the books are supposed to come out. Uh, so we have a couple of epics, a reprint, a Marvel Masterworks, and two trades to look at today. And as always, I put timestamps in the description of the video so you can jump around in case you're curious about a specific book or you don't want any spoilers about another. So let's go ahead and get started and kick it off with Shang-Chi Volume 3. Okay, so here we have Shang-Chi. This is the new series by Jean Luen Yang who kicked it off in 2021 and this collects issues 7 through 12 this is a volume 3 so this one is called family of origin and that's exactly what this is this goes back and tells the story of shang chi's mother and how she met his father and if you're familiar with the character of master kung fu or deadly hands of kung fu and shang chi this is retconning a few things well a couple of things. If you're coming in from the movies, this is also retconning a couple of things from there. Uh, this gives him a kind of a new story arc with his brothers and sisters. And he's kind of getting to know those characters. And they still don't know whether to trust him or not. Because he is kind of trading away the secrets of the family. And letting just outsiders into this family fold, if you will. But I found it to be pretty interesting. You know, it's an updated retelling of his parents and their origin and talking about who his mother was how like i mentioned she met his father who is now zheng uh, zhu i believe is how you pronounce his name because i've been mispronouncing shang chi for the last 35 years of my life do not take me and my word for granted on pronunciation on how to pronounce certain names so yes it is pronounced shang chi i learned that from the movie so it is a pretty interesting story. There is a villain that's kind of building up his own team. And, of course, this all comes to play later on. And now, is the villain related to him or not? I swear, he has, like, one of the worst families in the Marvel Universe. So, this book right here retails for $17.99. Uh, it has 144 pages. And you do have a couple of artists. I have Okay, number one, I have no idea how Marcos Toe kept a monthly schedule on Excalibur because I know he was the artist on Excalibur and he's still well did this come out no no I think this was coming out when the last few issues of Excalibur were coming out if I'm not mistaken uh, before the Knights of X series so I have no idea how he kept that monthly schedule and then came in here to draw issues 9 through 12 of this uh, before that it was Dyke Ran who's the artist on the first few issues 7 and 8 and then yes Marcos too who's art i completely love so shang chi reunited with his family getting acquainted with his brothers and sisters getting acquainted reacquainted with his mom to find out who she really is what kind of person she is and then we have this newer villain now this was supposed to have an issue 13 but i think that got canceled and it got rebranded as shang chi and the ten rings so and in the ending of this it there is a cliffhanger so i assume that's what that series is called there is also this collected in here, the Shang-Chi story from Marvel Voices Identity. And this is pretty much him fighting his past self, the two different paths they would have taken. I love the different costumes that he's used throughout the era. You have the classic costume there, and then you have the Hicksman, the Jonathan Hickman era of Avengers, and then you have his new costume. But it's pretty much him fighting himself. This is the way that some of the covers are collected on the opposite page or on the opposite side, rather, of the standard edition cover. But here are some variants. So this was a lot of fun. I really like Gene Luen Yang's take on the character. And he made the stories interesting, and I like the whole family element in here. 
But I hope it continues, and I hope we get a trade of that 10 rings, and it's an ongoing series. The Last Annihilation. Now, I had some of my viewers ask me exactly what this was when I was doing the upcoming Collected Editions for August. And all I knew is that this is really where Al Ewing's... That is a badass picture of Dormammu, by the way. This is where Al Ewing's Guardians of the Galaxy really ends. So this collects Guardians of the Galaxy 16 through 18. Cable Reloaded number one, and I'll explain why that's necessary. The Last Annihilation, Wiccan and Hulkling, which I've seen this solicited. I've seen that cover everywhere. I think this is... Uh, this, and then when I did the upcoming Collected Editions, is where I noticed that the cover had changed. But I saw the Wiccan and Hulkling cover as the cover of the trade paperback. It also collects The Last Annihilation, Wakanda, and then Sword Number 7, which Al Ewing was also writing at the time. So, what is The Last Annihilation? Does it have anything to do with Annihilus? Does it have anything to do with The Annihilation Scourge or Annihilation Conquest? No, just like every Annihilation with that title, it... They don't have really hardly anything to do with each other other than these cosmic characters are united to fight against this opposing force. This time being Dormammu. Dormammu is actually pretty slick in this. So he's trying to build a pentagram of planets. So he's taking over planets to unleash evil upon the universe. So not just the world, not just one particular dimension. The entire universe. So the Guardians of the Galaxy all team up with characters that you wouldn't really see them team up with including dr doom oh i love that by the way this cover is awesome because dr doom during this time is having a post hellfire gala party with storm really they're just eating dinner but this dinner gets interrupted so i love the issue of sword in here now dr doom of course has a plan and i love the plan and the plan involves you know separating into different groups invading different areas protecting different planets from being taken over by dormammu but the best part of the plan is with rocket raccoons like we're gonna need a big gun and everybody's like dude let dr doom talk we're teaming up with him and he's like no no i agree with the raccoon we need a big gun and who do you get to try to find your big gun come on now did I have to really spell it out for you? We saw it at the beginning, and there's a reason why it's collected in here. The man with the biggest guns of all. Cable. Hell yes, that's why Cable Reloaded is in here. It plays a big part in this Last Annihilation storyline. This was a lot of fun. I, I, It's an event that I wish had been collected in oversized hardcover format, and I feel like, you know, we're not getting as many. We're still getting some oversized hardcovers but we're not getting as many as we used to and i think maybe al ewing with the recognition that he was getting in immortal hulk and you know more and more people are talking about his writing that we might actually get an omnibus of this era because it rightly deserves it and i really wish that people had kept buying guardians of the galaxy because it was such a good run he put in so many characters from the different eras of guardians of the galaxy and I'm going to miss this as a monthly title. And we have a Guardians of the Galaxy 3 movie coming out. We need a monthly Guardians title. But anyway, that's just me hoping that somebody picks up on this. Um, all the way in the back, we have some variant covers. I'm not going to show them all. This book retails for $24.99 and it has 200 pages. Here's what all the variants look like. And by the way, this is all after the events of Empire. So you've got to read Empire to see what's going on with Wiccan and Hulkling and all their people. But here's the extras, and that is The Last Annihilation. Next up is the latest printing of Captain America, Hero or Hoax? That's the question being asked. Now, this was previously released. This is one of the older Captain America epic collections. So I'm going to do just a little bit of a comparison, mainly this, uh, the size, just to show you. you know, it's just a little bit slimmer than the original printing this is the original printing here on the left hand side they were using different paper stock they were using also a different printer and holy crap have we come a long way in how many epics there are this is the way it was originally um soliciting the epics that were available at the time and this is what we have now my goodness so this one here on the left hand side was printed at the elf sc printer it was here in the united states and this one is printed in Canada, which the Solisco printer has been printing these for a long time now. 
credits all look identical. And I was doing a little bit of color comparison too um, earlier, <laughs> or as I was reading this, or rereading this rather. And there really isn't any difference in the color. Colors are just maybe a little more vibrant than the original printing, and I mean a little bit. And that mainly has to do with the paper stock that they use. But I mean, there's hardly any difference at all. And just one more comparison so you can rest assured it's, it's identical. Now, of course, the big difference also being the price. This came out and was printed in 2018. The price of this was $39.99. This was printed just a couple months ago in 2022. And the price of this is $44.99. Now, like I said, this book has been out of print for a while. So here we are with the latest printing. Now, let's focus back on this. So this does collect Captain America 139 to 159 And as I mentioned, has uh, is retailing for $44.99. But it has 472 pages long. So Captain America 139 to 159 really wasn't the full title. It was Captain America and Falcon, and that's exactly what this collects. All those issues of Captain America and Falcon. Falcon being, you know, his right-hand man, and he playing sometimes more than just a supporting character role. I mean, sometimes he was the guy that was in charge of the book while Steve Rogers was away. So, I will say that this is an interesting transition period. This is after Stan Lee left. Um, you know, you still have John Romita on artwork. Then you have Gary Friedrich, which I know some people are really divided on his run. Uh, you have Sal Buscema stepping in as artist. Uh, you eventually have Jerry Conway. And then, of course, by the end of this, you have Steve Englehart writing these uh, issues in here. And the stories fluctuate. Like, some of them are really good. Some of them I'm like, okay, I can see why people did not dig this era. But, I don't know, ups and downs, but to me, that's just about every run. Every run to me has ups and downs. How can you appreciate those wonderful moments if you don't go through those rough patches? So, we do have Sam in here, and he's trying to find his place in Harlem. He's trying to date this lady. He's a so I think he's pretending to be a social worker. Steve Rogers is pretending to be a pol police officer during the first few issues because there's some missing cops, so he's going to go undercover. So... Now, this lady that Sam is dating, her name... Oh, I gotta talk about this issue. Oh, what is her name? Lila or Layla? Something like that. But anyway, she is really full into the Black Power movement. And that kind of split Captain America and Sam up. So I have to talk about this issue because I remember when I was a kid, I was like, that is crazy. I remember seeing this at... I've talked about this guy before, the flea markets, uh, Dr. Comics. I remember seeing this issue and... I thought this guy's costume was a real fist in his body. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so hardcore. This guy's got like a human fist inside of his body. I was an idiot. Um, <laughs> it's just... <laughs> hey, keep in mind, I was like 10 years old. I really didn't know about this whole power to the people thing back then. I mean, they didn't have the internet, okay? And they sure as hell didn't teach it in school at, at that age. But... I thought it was like a fist in the dude's body. But no, 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 it's not. It's just uh, these particular people that are causing havoc. And of course, there's a twist to this as to who's really behind this power to the people movement. And like I said, meanwhile, you know, Steve and Sam are kind of split up because Steve doesn't agree with all of this. Now we fast forward. There's a switch here, like where Falcon gets a new costume. And Captain America, of course, has to fight the Red Skull, I swear, like... For the last few overviews I've done of Captain America comics, it's always the return of the Red Skull or the death of the Red Skull. Is it always the same Red Skull? Well, that you can find out for yourself. And that's all I will say about that. So we do have a really interesting... Oh, here's the stranger right here looking a lot younger. We do have an... This is the new costume that I'm sure a lot of people are more familiar with, the Falcon. What I was going to say is we have an interesting story here towards the back of the book, the end of the book. And that is the return of Captain America from the 50s. So Captain America from the 50s was a lot angrier than the Captain America we know and love. Now he returns with Bucky. This is a really cool 
retcon, if you will, but it's retconning those stories of the 50s of how can Captain America have been around in the 50s if he was really in ice. So it was just Steve Englehart. I believe Steve Gerber helped him with some of this too. Uh, nope, it's just Steve Englehart. My fault. I know that Steve Gerber was writing a couple of the stories with him. But it's Steve Englehart just pretty much telling us exactly who this character was. He wasn't Steve Rogers. Now, I think in the original printing, when I did the overview of the omnibus, I talked about how they changed the colors uh, for Steve Rogers. And here he is with Sharon. They were at the beach. And I think they made them redder for the reprints, or maybe it was in the Masterworks originally. So you could tell the difference between him and the evil Captain America when they're fighting. So when they both have the costume on, they both have the cowl on, and they're getting into a fight. You can tell who the good Captain America is against the bad guy. I think that's why they did it. But I do remember that, you know, them having the same flesh tone in the original comics. Then again, I'm 44 years old and my brain is a bit mush, so I could be mistaken. But these are the kind of stories. This is the type of artwork you're going to find through these pages. Now, as far as the back of the book, we have some house ads right here. This is the original cover color rough by John Romita. An original art here by John Romita and Joe Sinat. Color roughs right here. That's cool. And that is a beautiful page right there from Gray Morrow. Back here, some more original cover art. Original art. This is Sal Buscema now. And then the cover right here, Sal Buscema's layouts and backgrounds. And this is the original layout and background for the original art. This was what they used for the omnibus. But this is the latest printing of Hero or Hoax. Now it is the time of the segment where I remind everyone to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. Pretty please. Which sugar on top here is what all the spines look like for the books coming out this week. Alright, let's keep going. Next up is Captain America, Sturm and Drang. This is volume 11. And holy crap, do we have so many volumes of Captain America and Epic Collection. Like, just consecutively, it's probably the most consecutive run we have in Epic Collection. We have everything from volume 9 all the way to volume 19. That is insane. When this journey began with me, of epic collections i really thought you know that we're gonna focus on four characters and we'd have them all by now and as you can see woo, they kept expanding on that because people kept taking an interest you know not everybody was into captain america or spider-man or x-men people were looking for specific characters and now we have things like luke cage in epic collection we're gonna have something called the modern epic collection stay tuned for that announcement that will be coming up on Thursday at 12.30 on this very channel. Or no, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thursday. This Thursday. So here is Captain America. This is volume 11. And I will say a lot of this has been uh, reprinted in the past in a Deathlock trade paperback, in a Falcon trade paperback, in this particular trade paperback. Hey, I was just talking about how when the Red Skull is in a story, he always comes back or he is dying. So good to finally get to replace this old trade. But there's a couple of issues here that I've never read, including this one. This is the Captain America Annual Number 7, and it's a return of a character that was messing with the Cosmic Cube in those Marvel 2-in-1 issues. So I haven't read this particular issue before. So this is Wondar, but although he doesn't go by that anymore, and he goes by Aquarian. And there's an interesting uh, story here with Modoc. So, like I said, this stuff hasn't been collected before. Pure Speaking of Deathlock, I love those Mike Zek covers. Mike Zek providing some of the artwork towards the very beginning of this particular run. But here we have Deathlock. Now, this time around, Deathlock has been cloned into this particular character. So, this is Luther Manning. And he's come back to the past. Now, keep in mind, the future back then was like the 90s. It was like 19... I always think that's interesting that... Deathlock was around in the 90s and then they relaunched the second series of his a mini series it was another Deathlock by then but in, in 1991 1990 maybe so yes we have this time traveling character coming back and he needs Captain America's help and his body is 
restored to that of the one that we know. This is a character that was created in the 70s. So Captain America, through some circumstances, gets to travel to the future. That's right. He is in the 1990s. I think it's just 1990, I, I want to say. Our past, his future, crazy. So this collects Captain America 286 to 301, Falcon 1 through 4, and Captain America number 7. And uh, you have the work in here of Jam DeMatteis, like I said, Mike Zek, uh, Christopher Priest, who writes the miniseries. He's known as James Owsley back then. Uh, Bill Mantlo does some things in here. Uh, Peter Gillis doing some of the stories in here. Paul Smith uh, doing the first issue of The Falcon here with Vince Coletta on art. And the Falcon story is interesting. And then you have uh, M.D. Bright stepping in as artist for issues two through four. Because he battles anybody from the Sentinel all the way until, like, Electro comes in and fights him. So, that's a pretty interesting mini. That one has been available in trade paper back before. And we get Captain America finally back in the past, reunited with his love. And at the time, his love is this young lady right here, Bernie. Now, you saw this. Mother Superior has returned. Now, this is a really interesting story with Baron Zemo and, of course, the Red Skull, because we know it's all leading to a, <clears throat> a, a final battle with the Red Skull. But it's a really cool final battle. This is the way that I originally read it, because I always wanted to read Captain America 300. I never got those single issues of that particular era. But Mother uh, Superior comes in with the Sisters of Sin, and I thought they were really cool characters. They're different. Here, let me show you. It's after this guy right here. This sl was Slayer, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so you have Sister Dream, Sister Pleasure, Sister Agony, and Sister Death. Man, they would make some hella Marvel Legends figures. I'm all about that Sister Death, though. Death by Shnoo Shnoo. Anyway, where the hell was I? Yes, uh, Nomad. This is also during the years of Jack Monroe's uh, Nomad right here. But... Captain America is just being tortured. He gets turned old. I like that. I like that aspect. So the fight between him and Red Skull is him as an old Captain America fighting Red Skull. And I'm going to leave that fight for you to find out if you've never read it, how it works. We do get a retelling and pretty much a modernization of the Red Skull's origin right here. So he talks about how, you know, Hitler pretty much recruited him to be in his Nazi army. It's interesting because they're sitting down, these two characters that are always at each other's throats, Captain America and Red Skull, are just sitting down and talking, and Captain America's hearing out the Red Skull's origin. Like I said, it's a modernization of his origin that we've seen in the past. But you can find out how that fight goes. You can find out if Captain America ever becomes young again. And let's look at the extras. Not a lot of extras here in the back. Uh, the book has 512 pages, and this one here retails for $49.99. So, some stuff from the handbook of the Marvel Universe. And, hey, yeah, it's these two covers right here with the new colors that they used. But that is Captain America. I'm sure I'm butchering the name. Sturm and Drang? Probably not how you say it. Next up is the final volume of Star Wars Legends Epic Collection, The Clone Wars, Volume 4. This one here uh, collects everything from the years. Oh, no, they don't do years here. They do episodes. It takes place between episodes two and three. So the stories here are after Attack of the Clones. And it makes sense because in the recap, they tell you exactly where you are during this particular era. The stories towards the beginning here are about just Anakin and Obi-Wan going after some droids and just going on some side adventures. So this collects the free comic book day, 2005 Star Wars number one. And then we get into this series, which was awesome. And I don't know how people feel about this particular series, but I really enjoyed it. I thought this was awesome, this four issue mini series. So this collects also Son of Dothamir, Star Wars Darth Maul, one through four, uh, Star Wars Republic, 74 through 77, 81 through 83. The episode three, Adaptation, issues one through four, Tag and Bink two, uh, issue number two, and the material from Star Wars Visionaries number one and Star Wars Tales number four. So this to me was such a kick-ass story of Darth Maul going against Darth Sidious and Count Dooku. 
You know, this is Darth Maul, of course. We're talking about the Clone War, so you can find out for yourself how Darth Maul comes back. Uh, but it's more about lineage and his mom. So I found that really interesting to go up against his, you know, former master. Now he's kind of, you know, he's, he's targeted by both sides, right? Like you have the dark side and you have the Jedi's. So he's targeted by both now. So it's kind of him rolling solo. So I thought this series was freaking awesome. And you can find out how that ends. Right, I have to talk about this one. This is a silent issue that's done by Derek Thompson. It is freaking phenomenal. It's just called Sithesis. And it's all about Darth Sidious, Emperor Palpatine. And all done with no dialogue at all. Just kind of like a day in the life of Emperor Palpatine. Or Darth Sidious, if you will. All these thoughts running through his head. And the art is just amazing. The colors are beautifully done. And I thought this was so well crafted. I'm not going to show you how it ends. Because I really like the ending. Especially that final panel. I'm like, damn. Such a cold bastard. But I thought this is one that really stood out. You know, besides the Darth Maul storyline. There's a lot of really good stories in here. Oh, and we also have this right here. Damn, I forgot about uh, these characters. This is a... Uh, Quin Quinlan Voss and um, Ayala. Oh, what is her? Ayala Segura? Sakura. So these two characters were shown like their side of things during the episode three. Because you do have the episode three Revenge of the Sith four issue mini in here. And I don't know if you're reading this without watching the movies. How do you do that? But just in case, you kind of see the transition here. A little closer with Anakin Skywalker becoming Darth Vader. I thought it was cool. They added a couple of things that you didn't see in the movies. Obviously, it's really close to the movie, though. There are some scenes and dialogue taken straight up from the movie. But there are a couple of scenes in here that I thought they added some stuff. This is um, what I was talking about. So this is where you get to see the perspective of Quinlan Voss, who was with Master Yoda when the Order was executed. I thought these were really great issues of the Republic and they really stood out, you know, to see the perspective of other Jedi and other what we eventually become rebels, right? To see where they ended up, I thought was interesting. Now, let's look here in the back. We do have, like I mentioned, the Tag and Bink stories in there. And then some material from Star Wars Tales. And as far as the extras, we do have some extras, such as these pinups back here and variant covers to Darth Maul. That one is awesome. Original artwork in here. So in here, you're going to find the work of John Ostrander, uh, Jander Sima, Don, uh, Doug Wheatley, Jeremy Barlow, just to name a few of creators. Uh, Nicola Scott also has some stuff in here. And here are some ads. What is this? A house ad? Star Wars Fan Club Special, okay. And some trade paperback covers back here, which are gorgeous. Then an ad for Star Wars Legends. This book right here retails for $39.99, and it has 440 pages, and this wraps up The Clone Wars in epic format. Last but certainly not least is Daredevil. This is Marvel Masterworks Daredevil Volume 16. This one retails for $75. As it is a Marvel Masterwork. So, on my channel, I try to stay away from spoilers. No matter how old some of these stories are. And people are really appreciative of that. Because, you know, you always have new readers coming in. And then, you know, there's always people that make fun of me. Like, oh, dude, that story took place like 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago. And I realized that. But I remember doing my overview of, I think it was the Dark Phoenix Saga. And I talked about something that I thought everybody would know because it's just out there, right? And boy, I was wrong. I had a few people that were really upset, so I changed my ways. That was about three years ago. Um, so <laughs> talking about this is going to be hard because this is wrapping up a particular storyline for Daredevil when it changes who the character of Matt Murdock is forever. I mean, writers to this day still write about the stories in here. Uh, we do have an introduction here by Klaus Jansen. Who wasn't, I don't want to call him an inker because he was really the finisher during this era 
of Frank Miller's breakdowns. As a matter of fact, kicking it off with this issue right here, 173, Finnish Art, Klaus Jansen. You have Glennis Ween doing the colors. You have Frank Miller, of course, the story and breakdowns. Dennis O'Neill's doing the editing and Joe Rosen doing the letters. Man, so many of those folks are gone now. Um, But this is such a classic era of Daredevil. So, I'm going to try my best to talk about it without going into spoilers. So, you have Matt still fighting the handoff. And now, things are getting closer and closer to home. You have had the appearance of Elektra in the previous volume. Somebody from Matt's past who's playing an important role. A huge, significant, probably the most important role in Matt's present life at this moment. He's confused. He's bewildered by her. She's an assassin. How can he love her? She's... You know, supposed to kill people that he knows. You have this awesome team up with Gladiator right here. And a lot of it is just fighting against the hand. So there's some awesome just kick-ass hand-to-hand -hand combat in here. And I say that, but, you know, Daredevil doesn't use any swords. You have some amazing, easy-to-follow artwork. You have some impressive plots and just perfect dialogue. There is a reason why this is regarded as one of the greatest comic books ever. And actually, Klaus Jansen puts it perfectly. He said when him and Mark Frank Miller get together from time to time, when they see each other every couple of years at conventions, and they go grab breakfast or dinner, there's not a moment or a time that this particular era of Daredevil does not come up. And they both kind of just nod their heads and go, yeah, you know, we had something special. That was really lightning in a bottle. And that's exactly what this is. So this collects Daredevil 173 to 181. 181. That's the story. Material from What If, 28 and 35, and then Bizarre Adventures, 28, and Marvel Fanfare, number one. But this is the big fight. This is the fight between Bullseye and Elektra. And the outcome of that will have ramification on Matt's life forever. This is Will, just Wilson Fisk stepping up to be the biggest villain in Daredevil's life, no matter what. And somehow, Matt still has to rise above it all. And be the hero that he was born to be. No matter what has happened to him. No matter what's happening to his friends. No matter, you know, what's going on with his lady. He has to rise up and be better than all those folks that are tearing him down. This is what comic... Like, this, it, to me, is like Comics 101. Like, I always say, Batman, you're one. Daredevil by Frank Miller. Those are classic stories that I think belong in everyone's library. I think people have been wanting me to do a video like that but it seems so snooty right like one guy on youtube saying no this really belongs on your in your library because i don't want to call people out because there are people that don't enjoy these type of stories i don't know who the five of you are but if i ever find i'm just kidding um but you know it, it's not for everybody eh, maybe i'll do that where the hell was i yes these are the stories that cemented what good comic book storytelling should be these are the stories that you know what i'm gonna say it Build the careers of people like Brian Michael Bendis, Ed Brubaker, M Mark Wade, Andy Diggle, Charles Soule, Chip Sadarsky, without uh, and Nishenti. Without the stories in here, those writers would not be able to tell the stories they're telling. I mean, and I, I'm saying I'm high praising this, but it's for a damn reason. Now, um, you know these beautiful masterworks are all the same. As far as there's two covers, of course, the rec market, and these are the standards right here. Underneath it is identical. You have this faux leather with the Daredevil logo and the Marvel logo and the volume number all embossed in silver. The end paper, always looking classy. All the way in the back is where you find the extras. Oh, what? I can show these. These are the what if stories back here. And then the Daredevil character Bible. And here we have some covers this is amazing heroes number four comic fanfare number 14 that is so awesome house ads right here that's from fantastic four the daredevil chronicles i think i used to have one of those so they're just reprints of these classic stories the interview with frank miller and klaus jansen it's a lot of talking dang to get the chance to interview both of those though Researcher George Olszewski compiled the first comprehensive accounting of Marvel's comics and their creators in the 1976-82 Marvel Comics Index. 
1985 to 1987, updated and expanded editions were released as the official Marvel Index. That is cool. And the cover there is by Frank Miller and Joseph Rubenstein with Steve O'Liff doing the covers. That is a beautiful Paul Gulacci piece right there. Wow. And original cover art. Original pages there. Make sure there's no spoilers, especially in this issue. Yep, I had to skip some pages there. And then the Bizarre Adventures. I remember these. These were some of the early trades I had when I came back to comics. And the introduction. This is from Daredevil Visionaries. One of those trades I was talking about by Diana Schutz. And then, of course, the biographies of Frank Miller, Mike W. Barr, Klaus Jansen, Roger McKenzie, and Paul Smith. And other Marvel Masterworks. 352 pages, $75. That, as they say, is that. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content and the page count of each of these collected editions. Let me know in the comments down below which you are picking up. If you are hoping that they use the new masters for the new printing of the Omnibus of Daredevil by Frank Miller. Uh, or if you are already picking up the Marvel Masterworks format. And if you're hoping for an Omnibus of Al Ewing's Guardians of the Galaxy, including this last Annihilation story. And yeah, if this is the way you're collecting Captain America, what you think about, you know, it's got a lot of books, so we don't have that many more volumes of epic collections left for Cap. I mean, yeah, I guess they could always continue it past the Heroes Reborn era, but maybe here in a couple of years. Uh, if you have any questions, leave your questions down below, comments down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. We are on Spreadshop and Patreon. Amazing ways to support the channel. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.